Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to Embroidery Gardens May Demo. How's everybody doing today? I see there's a lot of people in here already. We've got Virginia and Patricia, Molly's here, Kathy's here, Elaine's here. Thank you all for joining me. So today we are gonna be talking about how to stitch a recipe towel and mine is stitching right now. So let's just take a look at it. I'm gonna let it continue stitching while the demo's going on so you guys can actually see it stitch out. I started it a little bit earlier today just so that um, I could get it all done. It's taken about you know 30 some minutes to stitch out. I did wanna make sure my machine was uh, working properly and stuff. I've got my daughter-in-law here today, Jen. She's gonna help me out with questions. Hi, Jen. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so it's great to have someone helping me today, actually. Um, so a few things before we actually get into making the towel. I see people are already putting in hashtag garden and you can see it right up here. That's exactly how you have to uh, type it in the hashtag symbol, the word garden, and at the end of the demo, I'm going to be giving away a $20 gift card to embroideryguard.com. You only need to type it in one time and um, that will get you into the drawing. Typing it more than once doesn't increase your chances, it actually kicks it out. So I see everyone, I saw Caroline's in here, Rita's here, Star's here, great. So what are we gonna talk about today is stitching a recipe towel. But before we get started with that, what I wanna do is talk about, I've got a few upcoming things that I want to uh, let you know about. Um, let's see, on the 16th, or I'm sorry, June 6th is my Tuesday tip. I've been doing that every month. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna go live with it uh, this upcoming uh, Tuesday, the 6th of June, or if I'm just gonna make a post. So, you know, be watching for that. On June 13th, I'm partnering up with Stephanie Young, who is the craft coordinator for Caesar. Caesar is the vinyl company, like the heat transfer vinyl company. And we're going to talk about Caesar's new product, DTV, which is short for direct to vinyl. And it's a product that you can use at home. It's like a paper that you can run through your home inkjet printer and print on it. And then you can either cut it like you would um, heat transfer vinyl, or you could do like I did and just um, adhere it, heat press it to a piece of fabric, and then use it in one of my in the hoop zipper bags. So Stephanie, who is the um, expert in all of this, she's going to be talking all about the DTV, how to use it, how to cut it, you know, how you press it, and all that. And I'm going to take you through stitching one of my in the hoop zipper bags using something that you have printed out. And um, I'll show you how to center it and how to make the bag. So that's happening on the 13th. Be sure to follow um, Embroidery Garden's Facebook page and you'll get notified when we go live with that. On June 14th, I'm gonna be a guest presenter on Sewing Machines Plus. They're gonna have their annual Hoop Fest. And what is Hoop Fest? Well, it's a week long, Monday through Friday, um, virtual event where they talk about all kinds of products. There's all kinds of education involved. Um, it's a really great time, all kinds of deals, tons of giveaways. Um, there are contests, you can, um, one of them, you can enter a embroidery project that you've made, any project. Um, and one of the prizes is a $25,000 dream studio. So, you know, be sure to go to sewingmachinesplus.com, go to their website, and right there on the front page is going to be uh, a link for information about Hoop Fest. And I will be the present one of the presenters on June 14th at 2.30 Central Time. So watch for that. All right, I see there's Birdie. I see a lot of uh, hashtag gardens and stuff. Jen, are there any questions before we actually get started? Uh, no. Okay, so let me show you, and I'm going to go switch the camera view to the table so you can get a good look at this. We're going to be doing a recipe towel. This is my mother-in-law's uh, peanut butter cookie recipe. Um, I am not going to be digitizing her handwriting. What I'm going to be doing is putting the recipe 
exactly as she has written it out onto a towel. And when you do something like this, you're using very small lettering, like micro lettering. The lettering on this towel is, it, it's about a quarter of an inch high. Hi, Tammy, thanks for joining me. So it's about a quarter of an inch high. So that's very small lettering, but look how nice it looks. Let me bring it up here a little bit. See how you can, how, um, you can read this very easily. Um, all the letters are the same size. There's no kind of variation in them. And I'm using a special font that we'll talk about. These small types of letter letters can also be used on patches. Now, this patch that I made, it's about, uh, well, the patch itself, let's see. It's about two and a half inches around. The lettering on this is about 0.22. So that's really small lettering. But look how nice it turned out and how easy it is to read. Here's just another little sample. This little tag, I'll call it, is about half an inch high. So the lettering is probably about 0.22, maybe two, three inches high on that. And see how you can easily read this. This is more of a script font. So what we're going to do today is I've got the towel stitching out. I'm going to show you how I prepare the towel, the type of towels I use. Um, I'm going to show you in a pre-recorded video how I created the lettering. And you're going to actually see the towel stitch out. Let's just take a look at it again. It's still going. It's starting right now, the actual instruction part of the recipe. And I see um, Esther is already asking, can you use this on ribbon? Yes, you could use the small lettering on anything. Um, I see a lot of people, um, they do like lab coats or something, like you know, in the left chest area. And you know, you need small lettering. And a problem that happens is a lot of people take a font, maybe they purchased it, purchased it somewhere, and they just take it and try to reduce it down to like a quarter of an inch. And that does not work. It really doesn't work. Um, you see some people trying to use lettering that's built into their machine, and that really doesn't work either. The main takeaways that you're gonna get from this demo today are using lettering made specifically to stitch at a small size, and then some of the supplies I'm gonna talk about. And that's how you're gonna get your lettering to look like as nice as this looks, okay? A couple questions. Sure, Jen, what's... Um, do you reduce the speed on your machine? You know, you can if you want. Um, today, I did reduce the speed on the machine, basically because I thought maybe it might be a little bit too loud if I was running it at full speed. So I did reduce a little bit. Most of the time though, I don't run my machine at full speed. Um, my machine, machine will go up to uh, 1,050 stitches a minute. I usually run it about 800. I think I dropped it down to 600 today. I thought I'd keep the noise down a little bit. And then um, a special thread on top. We're gonna get. We're gonna talk all about the special thread, special needles. We're gonna get into all of that. So, um, well, let's first talk about the towels. And let me switch the camera again. Uh, society, I'll show you the back of the towels. Let, let me just get to everything first. So the type of towels I'm using are from All About Blanks. I either use All About Blanks flat weave towels. These are all flat weave. They're not terry cloth towels. They're all flat weave, sort of a linen type of a towel. Um, I either get All About Blanks towels or towels from Dunrovin House. And I know you guys are gonna ask, how do they wash? So this is one that I wash. And first, let me tell you too, before I embroider on them, I do not pre-wash the towels. I do not pre-wash the towels at all. I took this towel and washed it because I knew you guys wanted to see how they look after they get washed. This one is an all about blanks towel. It's a little tag in here. This one was run through a full um, cycle in the washing machine and dryer. And this is how it came out. Not bad for a 100% cotton towel. 
you're going to get some wrinkling with 100% cotton. There's no way to avoid it. I took my iron, quickly went over it. Um, I just did the opposite end of it. And now look how nice it looks. Yes, you will have to iron your towel um, after you wash it because 100% cotton is not going to come out of the washer and dryer looking like this. One thing is these towels, they did not shrink. If I kind of take, you know, both ends and kind of put them together, they are still nice and straight and the ends still match up. The side still needs to be pressed a little bit too. Um, but these are the towels that I use, and this is how it looks when you wash it, and this is how it looks after you just run a quick iron over it. So um, that's the type of towels I use. Um, again, basically, it's all about blanks. Towels are Dunrovin House. On this actual sample that I did, let me check and see what kind of towel I used on this. This is an all about blanks towel. I think this other one I used, yeah, this one is a Dunrovin House towel. These towels, you can get a lot of these Dunrovin House, like at your local um, quilt store, machine dealer. They carry a lot of these. I've even seen these like on Amazon. So this is a, another towel that I made a few years ago. And this one has been washed. Um, it looks like I need to wash it again. There's a little spot up there. But if you look at this towel and this towel, I want you to notice a couple little differences in my lettering. Let me get this one folded back. Um, so on this one, you can see my letters are a little bit more spaced out. Let me hold it up here. This is like the first recipe towel that I did. And you can see there's a tiny little jump between every all the letters. You can't see it a whole lot, but um, this was the first one I did. Then I think I got a little bit better as I went on. When I stitch a towel, you are not going to trim the tiny jumps between the letters. I do trim them between the words, but not the letters. And let me hold it up here. And like you can see in salt between the S and the A, there's a tiny jump. Doesn't bother me. I'm not going to be trimming it. Um, only between the words. Okay, so someone asked about looking at the back side of the towel. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll maybe saw that I posted or answered a question saying that I did not use any stabilizer on the back of the towel when I do them. So this is the back side of the towel. No stabilizer. I'm going to tell you what I do. Um, I can live with this. I can live with a little bit of bobbin thread showing. I can live with a few little tails on there. I would rather have this than have little tiny bits of stabilizer that you are not going to be able to um, pull out of all these little bitty tiny letters. So are there any questions uh, at this point, Jen? Okay. So... Let me look at my notes here. So how did I get this to look, this lettering, and now I've messed my towel up here. How did I get this lettering to look so nice? Well, a couple of things you need to use. And you need to use a font that is made specifically to stitch at a small size. Like I said earlier, you know, you purchase a lot of fonts. You can't take a font you know, even that's maybe a half an inch and squish it down to stitch at a quarter inch or less. More than likely, you're gonna have an issue with that. So you need to use fonts that are already designed to stitch at a small size. And the fonts that I use on my towels come from um, Designs and Machine Embroidery. I used their full-blown digitizing software called Perfect Embroidery Pro to set up my um, lettering. They have micro fonts built in to the software, and that's what I use. These fonts are designed to stitch at like 0.16 up to 0.3 inches high. Um, so it's a specific font that you're using. Um, you don't have to get their full-blown digitizing software. 
They do sell um, a font collection. It's called font collection number two, uh, micro fonts. There are 11 different fonts in it. You cannot take those fonts and just open them up like in PE, PES or HUS. They don't come in those formats. You would have to take those specific micro fonts, that set of them, download Dime's free embroidery tool shed, which is an editing program. You could open those um, fonts up in that program and basically just type it in. Um, you don't have some of the editing features that you do in some of their other software. I think the only one you wouldn't have is the vertical align. And we're gonna talk about that when I'm actually showing you how I set up my files um, to stitch, how I created the file. On the little patch that I did that has this very tiny lettering, I used patch and applique maker software from Dime. It also contains very small fonts in it. And really, you need to use a font that is made to stitch at a very small size. That's one of the takeaways from this whole, whole demo is to use a font that is specific to stitching at a small size. I'm also gonna give you some other products to use and some tips to use to make your lettering really turn out nice and crisp. Are there any questions, Jen? Um, I'd like to know if the fonts work at ISOVET.com? No, the fonts that I talk about, these um, that volume two micro fonts, you would have to download Dimes free, and it is free editing software called Embroidery Toolshed, and then you open them up in there. Don't buy those fonts thinking, oh, if they're gonna have HUS, PES, DST, they don't. Okay, you have to use them, but the software you use them in, um, the edit, that editing software is free, you can download it. And you can type in just exactly how you're gonna see in this little pre-recorded video that I did. Yeah, Charlene, I just saw your question. Yes, that micro font, um, or there is a small font built into the Luminaire. Actually, I think there are two of them, and it is number 50 or 51, 52, maybe something like that. I have used that font um, on something, you know, to stitch out small. One thing is, on the machine, you don't have as much control as you do if you use a font that you can, if you need to adjust the density or, um, you know, adjust the underlay or something like that. Um, you know, some of this stuff is, you're gonna have to test a little bit. So when I started creating these recipe towels, what I would do is I got a towel, you know, that one that I'm gonna usually stitch on and I would type in a couple of lines and I would test it on that towel to see, you know, do I like that height? Do I wanna adjust the height? Do I wanna adjust the density? Do I wanna adjust anything on it? And, you know, maybe I'd start stitching it way up here in a corner. Yeah, you're gonna waste a towel, but I would rather waste one towel than, you know, mess up a whole project. And, you know, if you make some adjustments, then take your practice towel and, you know, go to another spot and stitch and test. It's easier to do it that way than, you know, just start on a towel and in the end, it doesn't look that great. So if there aren't any questions, uh, let's see, Jan. Okay, I see people asking about some of the brother machines and the built-in tiny fonts. I don't know what exactly, which machines they're on, but again, you don't have control over a lot of the stitch out. It's basically you type it in the machine and you have to go basically with that. You don't have the control that you have with, um, you know, like fonts from the software like that I'll show you in this video that I'm gonna be um, showing. And you really need that control because, let's look again at this towel. Look how all of my letters are one, first off, it's very readable. This is very, um, I mean, you can read this really, really well. And the fact that all of my letters are the same size, they're consistent, meaning, um, for example, this morning, I was on Facebook looking around, you know, watching my news feed. I saw some designs come up that someone had made, 
And you could tell they used built-in lettering off of, you know, their software, or they used um, maybe off their machine, and they sized it. And like the I, a letter I, it was actually shorter than, you know, the next letter next to it. There was varying heights to some of the letters, and it's just because took software and shrunk the letters down. It's key, again, to use fonts made to stitch at a small size. I know about water-soluble topper. Yeah, I don't use water-soluble topper. You can see mine stitching over here. One reason, I don't want to pull it out of all those little tiny letters like the circle in the B or the D or the uh, circle in the eggs, you know, that's showing on the screen now. I don't want to do that. I don't need it on there. Um, so we're going to... Pardon me? Thread questions. Uh, we're going to get all into that in just a second here. Just a second. Um, okay, I see someone asking also about jump stitches. Again, I trimmed between the words, which was easy to do, but I don't trim between the letters. This, if you get a real close up, look at it. In some spots, you could, might see the jump between the letters but it's very, very tiny. And even if I saw it, I would not trim between the letters. I would only trim between the words. Let's see, the trimming on the towel, yeah, on the one that is shown, uh, Charlene, that is a cute little holiday towel. That one's from All About Blanks, too. So let's talk about how I prepare the towel. Okay, so first off, when I do a towel, I like to have my towels folded in thirds. That's how I display my towels. And when I fold them, I basically fold them so that when they are done being, uh, when I'm done folding them, it's about seven inches across. That's just me. Okay, that's what I like to do. So I keep that in mind because when I create my lettering file, I wanna make sure that it's only about, at the most, five and a half inches wide. Because if my towel, I'm gonna to embroider it on, the display area of my towel is seven inches, I don't want it going all the way to the edge of my folds. I want it to, you know, maybe be an inch or so in from the fold. So I, I keep that in the back of my mind. So to prepare the towel, what I do is I use Terial Magic. And this is how I get away with not using any um, stabilizer. Terial Magic is a liquid fabric stabilizer. I learned about this, you know, from the years that I was traveling and doing events. Um, this is what I use. And what it does is it's going to make your towel stiff. It washes away. So don't worry about that. Um, it washes completely out. I use it on this towel. And, you know, this one is, again, has been washed and see it's not stiff or anything. It's, you know, very pliable. But after you spray it on, and what I do is I spray it on, iron it dry. So let's just say, let me get my towel here. I don't have any lettering on it yet. I'm just getting my towel ready. I spray this on iron it dry and repeat that about three times and you will feel the fabric become stiff and that's what you want it to be you want it to be stiff and since we're doing um you know this lettering if the lettering itself is not really dense so using this is enough Okay, so Jen said, someone is asking, is this different than starch? Yes, it is. This is a liquid fabric stabilizer, okay? It's different than starch. If you were doing like a hanky, you know, like um, you see a lot of those embroidered for uh, the bride to carry, maybe they put the wedding date on it, maybe a little quote on it, you want to use this. Hankies are very, very thin, um, some people actually will pour this into a bowl 
put, you know, what they're going to embroider in that and soak it in there, then let it dry and iron it. I just spray it on about three times. Spray, iron dry, spray, iron dry, spray, iron dry. Now, a couple of tips about using this. I always spray it from the back side, and I only spray it in the area that I'm basically going to be embroidering on. And um, I put the nozzle on spray. The settings are off, spray, and then um, stream. So I put it on spray. And I make sure that the first couple of pumps of the handle, I do it into a garbage can. And the reason I do that is because I wanna make sure the nozzle isn't clogged or anything. Um, there have been times that, you know, I went to press this and instead of spray, it just sort of dribbled out because I had some dried up gunk on here. So I spray it into a, a garbage can to make sure um, to make sure that um, you know it's going to come out fine. So I spray it where I need it, iron it, spray it, iron it, spray it, iron it. I see someone asking, use something different, like from the grocery store. No, use Tyrael Magic. Yeah, it might be a little bit expensive. I think this bottle, sixteen ounces, was about eighteen dollars. Again, if you're not going to use the specific products, you're not going to get the same results. You know, if you want to test, you know, you can certainly do that. But someone wanted to know if you have to soak it. How much, I guess, you have to put on. Okay, someone is asking about soaking it. I talked about that. You know, if you wanted to, you could soak it. I wouldn't soak like this towel. Um, again, you can see the results that I got. And I'm telling you exactly how, you know, I do it. So my towel has been um, sprayed with material magic. It's all nice and stiff basically here in this area. I always print out a template of my designs. I don't print templates out of my, um, um, in the hoop designs, but I print out anything that I'm embroidering like this, I always print out a template. This, I think, let me just double check. I put the um, lettering starts two and a half inches up from the bottom of the towel. That's me. You know, you can um, put it anywhere that you want, but I find the center of my towel by folding it in half. And since this is really stiff, I just kind of press it, you know, at the bottom and press it up here at the top. Find my center point line up my recipe, uh, make it, like I said, I make my two and a half inches from the bottom, get it centered and put it under my machine and get ready to stitch. This is a snowman marker. I use PE design um, to transfer to my machine and I have it set up to print the snowman marker and then I get it lined up um, that way. I want to know if you can spray it after. Uh, Karen, I would not spray it after it's in the hoop. You have to iron it, spray it, and iron it. Um, you know, just get it done beforehand. That's how I've done all of these towels. And I'm using, if you can look back at the machine, I am using a magnetic snap hoop. You don't have to, but um, I just find it easier. Let's see, I'm looking at the recipe. It's got two more lines to stitch and then it's going to be done. And I'll take it out of the hoop and I'll show a close up of all of that. But once I'm ready to um, put my recipe on, the products that you want to use in addition to the small lettering, fonts made specifically to stitch small, I also use thread. This is called fine line thread. It's from Dime and it is a 60 weight thread. So it is thinner than regular embroidery thread, which is 40 weight. The higher the number, the thinner the thread. When you think about it, when you are stitching lettering this small, if you use a thinner thread, it's going to 
it's going to be better. It's not adding bulk. It's thinner. Um, so it, it's going to stitch better by using um, thinner thread. So I use the fine line thread. So in conjunction with the small lettering, the thinner thread, you're going to get a better stitch out. Now, you don't have to buy this whole big set of 15 colors like I did. Um, you know, they do sell it just by spools, but the thinner thread is going to make a difference too. Also, besides the thinner thread, you want to use, and let me look for it, a smaller needle. Um, I used, um, right now I'm using a 7010. That's what I have in my machine now, a 7010. Um, you can use, probably it's better, a 659. I couldn't find my 659 needle, so um, I'm using a 7010. Smaller needle, smaller point on it, smaller eye is going to make a smaller hole. Would you use it on the top and bottom thread? The, the fine line thread? Absolutely. I'm using just a regular bobbin thread. So I have thinner thread, small lettering made to stitch smaller and a smaller needle. You can use smaller or um, thinner bobbin thread. You could use like a 90 weight bobbin thread if you wanted to. I'm using a um, just regular bobbin thread, which is 60 weight. And I think I use that on all of my towels that I've made. Um, let's see. Yeah, Robin, you can use a pre-round 60. The most important thing is the font needs to be one that is designed to stitch at a small size. Use the small thread. If you use, um, you know, regular embroidery thread, 40 weight, and you notice that eh, it looks a little thick or maybe my letters aren't as crisp as they, you know, I want them to be. If you use that thinner thread, you'll see a difference and the uh, smaller needle because it's going to make a smaller hole. Um, all of these things, you know, if you just think about it, you can see how it would work, you know, and how it's going to make the small lettering. I mean, a quarter inch is not very big. You know, look at a ruler to see how big, you know, this lettering actually is. So the staff monster groups work on all um, um, or, I all Dime has Snap Monster hoops for, I think, most machines. They have a drop-down menu when you go to their site, and you know they're broken into categories by you know brother, Bernina, Boff, Viking, you know Baby Lock. They're all broken down, and then you there is a compatibility chart on their site also. Um, but. I really like using the snap hoop for this application. It holds it nice and tight. Um, you can see I'm not having any kind of issue at all stitching it. There's a few questions about the auto threader. It works with the small needle. Uh, yes, my auto threader with the smaller thread, if you're using the smaller needle, it still works. I'm using, I'm stitching on a Brother Luminaire and um, I use my needle threader and I don't have any problem with it at all. Uh, let's see, can you use a textured towel? You know, you can if you want. You don't really, or I will say I would not prefer to use a textured towel. Again, this is small lettering. Grab a ruler and look how small it is. And if you have, you know, a terry cloth towel and you have all those little loops in that pile, you know, that's gonna make this not be as crisp and clear. Um, even if you put a topper over it, then you gotta go back and, let me grab my towel here. I mean, look at some of these tiny areas, like, and I'm talking about like the E. Look at that, how tiny that is. I mean, you're gonna have to pick it out or you're gonna have to wash it and you're gonna have to make sure that you really wash it well to get all of your water soluble topper out. Using these um, flat weave towels, and again, they're like a linen style towel, I think is better. Um, it's my preferred towel to use when doing things um, like this. So we've talked about um, the needles, 
the material magic, um, the different thread. And again, I tried to stay, and let me show you this too. I tried to stay very true to my mother-in-law's recipe. Let me get my towel just kind of folded back up quickly. I tried to stay true to her recipe. And again, you know, I. so this is her handwritten recipe. And this is the towel that I did. I did not notice until I was done that where I had messed up. And where I messed up is, let me kind of move some stuff out of the way. If you look at her recipe, she has one cup sugar. I put one cup of sugar, one cup of brown sugar. I put of in just about every line that she had, not even thinking about it. So another tip is, you know, have someone proofread it for you. Um, it, I wanted to stay, like I said, I wanted to stay as true as I could to her recipe. That's why, you know, there's a tiny bit of a space between peanut butter cookies and her ingredients study. Then she has a little bit bigger space here between um, where the actual instructions start. And I also did the lines of writing exactly as she did. Um, for example, right here after it says add flour, I could have just kept rolling with the next sentence, roll into balls and flatten with fork, but that's not what Betty did. So I really tried to stay true to her recipe. Even though this is not her handwriting, I tried to stay true to how she wrote it. Um, the fact that I created the lettering in software, I was able to go back and take out all those ofs that I had put in there. And so now this time you're gonna see it when it's finished where it's gonna look exactly as Betty had written it. Question Any questions, Jim? 60 weight often better than a 90 weight in general? You know, it, it, it depends on what you're doing. Bobbin thread is 60 weight. Um, let's say I was stitching out my towel and I'm using the correct font, I'm using the smaller thread, I'm using a smaller needle, but it still just isn't crisper. It's not just the look I want. I might switch to a 90 weight bobbin. It's thinner than a 60 weight and see how that looks. Any other questions? Uh, template, what did you use? Uh, to when I printed my, my template, this is just paper. Um, I printed it from my software. I know a lot of times, a lot of people say, I can't print a template. Uh, my software won't do it. Most of the time, if you go up to file, print, you can print a template of whatever is on your screen and software. If you download Dimes free embroidery tool shed uh, software, you can print a template. Their templates come out with a cross and an X going through it. So you've got like all your points covered. Um, so for free, you can print any templates that you need. Uh, let's see, any other questions? The thread color on my towel I'm using, uh, I'm stitching now is brown. Again, it comes from the, uh, the set of colors, the fine line uh, 60 weight thread that I bought from Dime. I got all these colors. There are 15 colors. Again, you don't have to purchase, you know, a big set like that. But you know what? This is going to last me forever because I'm basically only going to use it when I'm doing lettering. And then I have any color that I need. Um, so I, what now I want to do is I want to play the video that I pre-recorded of me going into Dime Software and how I actually created the lettering. So let me bring that up. So I've got the software opened up and I'm gonna click on the text tool here in the upper left. I'm just gonna click in the open workspace and it's gonna put the letter A there. It does that for all of the alphabets. Over here in the properties window on the text on the left-hand side, this is the Arial font. This is the micro font. And if I come down here to where it says Arial small, you can 
uh, see there are more micro fonts. There are actually 11 micro fonts. They all have this yellow M in front of them. If I click on the uh, property window here, it opens up the catalog of the fonts and it's highlighted the Arial Small, which I have chosen. And then all of these in this row and the last row are their micro fonts. There are 11 of them. I went ahead and I just used the Arial font. Um, you could choose any of the small fonts that you wanted. If I put my cursor here over the text window, it opens up and shows you all the available characters you have. And there at the bottom, if I touch it again, it says recommended height range. And this one is 0.16 to 0.31. So that's the range you should keep the height of your letters in. So it defaults to 0.24. We're going to leave it there for right now. And we're going to go ahead and start typing in Betty's recipe. So up here in the text window, let me just start getting what um, her recipe is. And let me backspace. There we go. Um, the title, Peanut Butter Cookies. I've got it typed in and I hit apply. I'm going to take the select tool so I can select all the letters at once and just kind of move it up to the top of the screen because I'm going to type each line in separately. It's a little bit easier to do it that way. I'm going to go back up to the text tool in the upper left, click it, click onto the workspace, you can click anywhere, it doesn't matter. The next line is one cup sugar. Hit apply. Hit the select tool. And I'm just going to kind of put them all in a row. I don't want to get the recipe out of um, order. Hit the text tool again. The next line, one cup brown sugar. And it's easy as typing each line in. Hit apply. I have to get the select tool or else I'll just move one of the letters. Go back, hit the text tool, click into the workspace. The next line is one cup butter. Hit apply. Hit the select tool so I grab everything. Just move it over, get the text tool again, click in the workspace, come back up to that property window, and the next line is one cup shortening. I was getting a little hungry when I was doing the original towel. Get, I wanted some peanut butter cookies. Hit this text tool again. Click in the workspace. The next line is one cup peanut butter. Hit apply. Select tool. Again, that makes allows me to move the entire line. The next line, two eggs. Apply, select tool. We're going to take care of lining everything up later. Right now, I just want to get everything, um, all the lines of the recipe in. One teaspoon soda. She did not put a period after teaspoon, so I'm not going to either. Okay, the next line. one half teaspoon of salt. Now, my font does not have the forward slash for the half, so we're gonna have to make that. So I'm going to put in the one, I'm gonna leave a space, that's where we're gonna make our slash, two, and then the abbreviation for teaspoon and salt. Hit apply, and let me just uh, move that over. Now, we got to get that slash in there. So this is how we're going to do that. First, I'm going to zoom in on that line. Go back to the select tool. I'm coming up here to the um, top of the screen and this backwards S that looks like it's got some um, uh, zigzag stitches. That's what I'm going to use, the steel stitch. Click it. And I'm going to draw in my own slash. So it has to go between the one and the two. I'm just going to click and drop it down at the bottom of the letters and right click. And there it is. Of course, now it's too thick. 
Let me hit the select tool to grab it. And over here in the properties uh, window, the width is 3.0. Let's drop it down to one. Hit apply. And that looks good. I do want to zoom in. So I want to make sure I have it exactly where I want it. I can move it. I can also come up here in uh, the upper right and get the transform key. See how tall it is. I may not have made it the same height as my letters. My letters all defaulted to 0.24, so let me make it 0.24. Hit apply. And I think that looks good. So now we're going to drop down to get everything um, back on the screen. One thing though is you notice if I click on the lettering that I created and move it, my slash doesn't move. So let me undo. And to keep this line together and to keep everything in place, I'm gonna select everything, right click, and group it. Now when I move it, it all moves at once. So now I'm gonna continue on with the recipe. Let me make some room on the screen here by zooming out a bit. Get the text tool, click, and the next line is one teaspoon vanilla. Hit apply, select tool, move it down where it's gonna go. And the last ingredient, is going to be, whoops, let me click on the workspace, three cups flour. Hit apply. Select tool, put it down where it goes. Now the next part are the actual instructions of the recipe. Get the text tool again, um, click into the workspace, and I'm gonna type it exactly as she has it, all the uh, spacing, all the lines that she has. So it's cream, sugars. As she didn't write the word and, she used her own kind of little symbol, but I'm gonna use the ampersand. Shortening, period, space, add. Hit apply. And let's move it down here. This is exactly how she typed it, so that's how I'm going to keep it. Go back to the text tool, click in the workspace. The next line is peanut butter and mix. She used that symbol again. Period, space, add, eggs, and mix, period. Hit apply. Get that select tool so I'm moving everything at once. The next line, I got to get the text tool, click in the workspace. And the next line is add salt, comma, soda, and vanilla, period. Then she's got gradually. I'm going to hit apply. And this looks like it's going to be like our longest line, maybe. Or eh, it looks like the line above it is the longest line. And we'll talk about that in just a second. We're almost done getting the recipe typed in. Uh, then she's got gradually, then it's add flour. And she's got that as um, a line. Hit the select tool, put it in place. And then the last part of the recipe is roll into balls and flatten. Use that ampersand again, flatten with. Again, I'm trying to keep it as true to her writing as I can here. And the last line is fork, period, bake 375 for 10 to 12 minutes. She didn't put a period, so I'm not going to. Hit apply, select tool, and this is her recipe. Let me just kind of gather it all. Um, we're gonna fit it to the screen just so we can see it better. Now, on her recipe though, she has spacing between the title 
So I'm gonna just move it up a little bit. And where she gets down to cream the sugars and the shortening, she's got a uh, space, kind of more of a space here. So the ingredients, I wanna take those. First, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna grab the entire recipe. And let me get back to where we can see it all. I'm gonna grab the entire recipe and I'm gonna use these align tools up here and I'm going to align everything on the left-hand side. You notice that everything now is even on the left-hand side. I wanna take her ingredients and we're going to space those or distribute those vertically. That means each line is going to be, have the same exact space between each line. So let me do that. You probably didn't see it move a lot, but it did move. And I'm gonna do that same thing down here with the shortenings. And I think I wanna take these lines right here and move them just up a little bit. Select those. I am going to space them vertically. I did move that, so I want to go back and make sure my left align is good. And I'm happy with the space between peanut butter cookies, the ingredients, and the ingredients, and the actual instructions. To me, everything looks great. I'm going to select the entire thing again. And at this point, let's go back and look at what size our recipe is. Remember, I wanted to keep it about five and a half inches wide. So if I click on this transform icon in the upper right, it tells me that it's 5.71. I do want it to be 5.5 or, you know, thereabouts. So let me go ahead and just make it 5.5. Hit apply and it changes the recipe. So you can see up here in the transform window, the width is 5.5 and the height is like 6.23. It's kind of almost a square, not really though, but that looks good to me. I do wanna go back up into this text and check out um, the settings here. Everything is at 0.24. Remember when I um, hold my cursor over the alphabet, it will give me recommended height range um, recommendations. And it does say 0.16, you can go down that low to have it stitch out well. And again, here are the, your choices of the small fonts. You'd wanna use this line and this last line, pick one of those. Um, I could drop down the size if I wanted to. Um, that's kind of up to you. If we kind of zoom in, let's zoom in on the letters for just a second here. Let's kind of zoom in on this part. Now, between the A, between these numbers and the words, that's going to be a jump, and I will clip that. I am not going to clip between the, each letter. I will clip between words, so I'll clip my jumps between cup and sugar, but I'm not going to clip between sugar are the S and the U and the G and the A and the R and sugar. Um, they are close enough together that um, you're not gonna see those tiny little jumps. One thing you can do, say you don't like the look of something, and let me zoom out so I make sure that I um, select everything because I would want whatever change I made to apply to all the letters and I do have everything selected. This lot, uh, I'm sorry, the space percent right here, it's set at zero. Let's zoom in again, just so you can see something change. I'll just zoom in on this uh, line here. Let's put this like at a really high number. Let's pick 15 so we can really see what it does and hit apply. Notice that it made bigger spaces between words and it also made larger spaces between letters. Now, you would see that. You would really see the space between, for example, here the C and the U and the U and the P. Um, maybe that's something you might like for some uh, application. But I'm gonna drop it down to, let's look at it at one. Hit apply. Now you're gonna see everything kind of scooch back together again. One thing that I like to look at are letters 
that are um, really close together. And one of that would be here in the word vanilla, the two L's. Uh, well, right here in between the two T's too, that is um, close together, but I can see the tiniest little space in there. So I'm gonna leave mine at one. Let's drop down to get everything in here. If you like how everything is, you've double checked your recipe, your spelling and everything, go ahead and come up to file, save as, and I would save this in the C2S format. If you wanted to make any change, this would be the easiest way to change it. So I'm just gonna call it Betty's Peanut Butter Cookie Recipe and hit save. Now I have it saved, I can reopen this file, make any kind of changes I want to. To have the file that I need to stitch out on my machine, go up to File, Save As, then you can use this drop down menu here and pick your machine embroidery format. There is a ton of them. I would pick the uh, brother format. It's gonna save it as a PES file, click save. Now I have my file that I need to send to my machine. Also, you can, if you prefer, you can print a template. If you go to file, print, you can print this out and it will give you um, a centering mark. Let me hit cancel here, file. Let's go to print, whoops, hit it again. Let's, I'm gonna go to print preview and see it shows you how it would print out. Here would be your center. This is what you would use to line it up um, on your towel. So it's that easy. Now we're gonna get the machine set up and get ready to stitch this out. All right, so that's how I created the lettering in the software. I saw some questions coming through. The um, most recent one is Sandy says, the spacing doesn't appear to be the same. So let's look at this. It is the same. Well, let me switch to the table view. You have to notice that, whoops, knocked something over. And I believe she's probably talking about right here where this space looks larger than, you know, the line space looks larger than the space here between these lines. It's because in this line, if you look at the Y, a Y is what they call um, a descender in fonts. So that Y is hanging down below the, the line, the font line. Um, letters that stick up like the H in shortening is called an ascender. So it takes that into account. If gradually was on top of add flower, you would see that same spacing you have here, it would be there. If this was moved over all the way to here, it would have the exact same spacing at the bottom of the Y um, to these letters here. It's kind of a little bit of an illusion. It is all spaced the same, but if you have an, a descender, um, you know, the spacing goes by descenders and ascenders when it spaces. So that's why it appears to look that way when it's really not. Um, I did see a few other questions come through while that video was playing. One of them was, why didn't I just type all the letters in, hit return and just continue typing? The reason I did each line at a time was because it gives me more control and if I have to edit, I can edit very easily. Um, if everything is all one piece, it makes it a little bit harder to edit. I have to go through and I have to ungroup and you know move things and make sure that I group them back again. It's just easier to do it all in one line and it makes the editing a lot easier to do. Um, some people were asking questions about Dime software and you know all the things in it. You know, I'm not an expert. I use Dime software and you know I do the things that I want to do in it. If you have Dime software and need help with it, they have a Facebook group called Dime um, Dime Inspiration Software. I believe that's their group. Um, every other Tuesday 
on Designs and Machine Embroidery's Facebook page, Ashley, who is their lead educator, comes on and she's showing something in Dime software. In one of the softwares, they have all kinds of different softwares. And, you know, if you have something and you are having a problem, watch these lives that Ashley does or, you know, and join their Facebook group and ask questions. Um, someone else also asked a question about coupons for these products. Well, these products that I'm using, I don't sell them, so I can't give you coupons for them. Um, and someone said quilt labels. You can use this idea on quilt labels. And yes, you can. That would be a great application. Um, my friend Caroline, was. I was talking to her the other day, and she's in the process of stitching on baseballs. You take the baseball apart and, you know, you stitch uh, lettering on them. And she said that there was a lot of lettering that she had to add onto these small pieces. And um, she was uh, using Dime Software, creating her lettering using a micro font. And she changed the density and it made all the difference in the world. Um, sometimes I do, like I said, you're going to do a test. And if you don't like it, you're going to make some changes. And if you need to, you can change the density, even just by one click can make something that's not quite so, you know, readable and make it crisp and clear. Wilma, how do I get the snowman to print out on my template? Well, if you use um, uh, Brother Software, PE Design, when you go to print and print preferences, you can go in and put a check mark by the little snowman, and it'll print out on all of your templates. Uh, let's see. Just looking for um, any more questions. Jenna, did you see anything? So, uh, what software are you using? Uh, that was Dimes. Um, what was I using? <laughs> I was using their full blown digitizing software, but again, you could do the same thing in their free embroidery tool shed software but you would have to purchase those fonts. They have a font collection of 11 micro fonts that um, you could use to do exactly what I'm doing. The, whoops, the towel is done stitching, so let's take it off the machine, give it a close up look. And then we're gonna be doing the giveaway, so make sure you have the hashtag garden um, typed in. All right, so just came off the machines. So I saw someone just asked about this border. That's on the towel, all about blanks. Um, I think they call it one of their holiday towels. So um, I would now, let me see if I got my little tiny Kai scissors. These are the scissors I love, and they're great for doing what I'm going to do. You can see the curved tip on them. They're very sharp, and the points are tiny. And I would lay this down on a flat surface. And then I would, like I said, I'm only going to be clipping between words. So I could get my scissors underneath um, here and just clip that jump between my words. I'm not going to worry about it. If I happen to see, and I really don't even see a jump between any of the letters. I'm going to hold this up a little bit higher so you guys can get a look. I don't see jumps between letters, but the ones between the words, I will go through and I will clip out. Um, and if you notice, I since I did um, my original towel and I saved that file I did, remember I showed you to save the file that you create, I was able to go in and easily edit my mistakes of putting the word of in, and I took it out in all the lines, and now it resembles Betty's recipe. Again, the back side, there is no stabilizer. Um, I might go back and trim just some of those tails down a little bit. I'm not going to clip them all the way down, but um, like I said, I can definitely live with this being the back side of my towel. And another thing, when I run my hand over this, it feels nice and smooth. I don't feel a bunch of little knots and little balls of thread. And it's just, it's just beautiful, I think. Let me just take it out of the hoop. 
And like I said, again, I think you can kind of see how stiff this is right here, right where I embroidered. See this, I didn't really put any of the material magic over here and I can kind of scrunch this up. This here is more stiff and that is what allows me not to have to use any type of stabilizer. And what I would do is um, I would either, to give this to someone, I would either rinse it all out and iron it, or I would tell them to, um, you know, wash it before they use it. What size hoop was I using? I used an eight by eight hoop. My design, when it was done, basically measures five and a half inches wide by 6.25 inches high. So I could have used my, um, well, I would have had to use my six by 10 hoop, but you create your lettering like that, you have control over how big your design is and what size hoop you want. I don't have a six by 10 magnetic hoop, so I use my eight by eight. Uh, yeah, Sandy, you can use any kind of hoop that you want. I just happen to have, you know, the dime hoop that fit my recipe, so that's what I chose to use. Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, pardon me? Hashtag garden. Right. If there aren't any other questions, make sure you have typed in hashtag garden, just like this. It has to be exactly like that. And we're going to get ready to pick the winner. Mary uh, Fran, towels came from All About Blanks and um, Dunrovin ones I got off of Amazon. You can go back and rewatch this. Um, Susie, I went over the Tyrell Magic. Again, if you need to rewatch, you certainly can. Let's get the giveaway going. This is your last chance to get hashtag garden in. And let me get the screen up with the giveaway on it. Here it is. All right, I'm gonna hit the draw and it's gonna pick somebody for the $20 gift card to embroiderygarden.com. And the winner is, drum roll, Kathy Lutz. Go ahead and give me, um, send me an email via the website, the contact us button, and I will get you your $20 gift card to embroiderygarden.com. And let me get rid of the screen. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Remember to um, follow Embroidery Garden on Facebook, like and follow the page. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will give you a notification every time I go live. Um, I'm on Instagram. You can follow me there. But watch for next month's demo. I do it every month. I have for the past two years now. And every first Tuesday, I do the Tuesday tip of the month. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me. Go out and have a great day.